I think I am live. If there's anyone out there, say hello, say hello. Tell me how the audio is. I'll check on my, oops. I will check on my other phone to see. what all of your questions are. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Let me know where you're tuning in from. Tell me what state you're from or what country you're from. Let me know how the audio is. Tell me how you're handling quarantine. Tell me how you're handling. That's weird, there's some playback there. So I have uh, been trying to stay busy by taking long walks, long walks. I wish I could say they were on the beach, but that is not the case. Um, Here in Puerto Rico, it's pretty hardcore in terms of we can't really go out or do much. We can't be out of the house at any reason past 7 p.m. Hey, hi, how are you doing? I am, can't say your name. Not sure I can pronounce that. Belgium, oh, nice, nice. Actually, I have a really good friend from Belgium. We've gone sailing together. She lives here in Puerto Rico. I take that back. She's from Norway. Her husband is from Belgium. Hello, Thomas. Welcome, welcome. You guys can just go ahead and start firing away when it comes to questions. Oh, hey, hey. Hi, Lydia. I am Lydia, Slovakia, wow, I love to see Romania. This is the coolest. I always just assume that people that are watching are from the States, but I love to hear all the countries that you're from. Oh, hi, Carlos Cruz, you're also in Puerto Rico here, so you know how it feels. Ella's from Norway, Tiffany, what's up, Tiffany? Ohio. Hello, Anna. Welcome, welcome. Um, Sahar says, oh, wait a second. They're disappearing. Okay. I have to go back to my other phone. I have two phones, but I don't have two computers. So what's really challenging is I wrote in my post earlier today that basically my computer's broken. It will not turn on. It's never happened to me before. I was looking up some, some conspiracy stuff and my computer literally just died on me. I've been watching videos on how to restart it and I've had no luck. So I'm sorry, but I will not be editing videos on my phone. That sounds like a nightmare. The problem is I need a little screwdriver to open it up so I could possibly fix it. But there are no hardware stores open here in Puerto Rico at all. And actually, they're now going to be opening up Home Depot, but you have to go by appointment or something. It's really strange. And at Costco, not even the electronics, it's all taped off. Like You can't even go buy any of that. Um, So Sahar says, I want to do a water fast during quarantine. Wouldn't this be a perfect time to do so? So I would say, yeah, it probably would be a perfect time to do it in terms of I have found it easier for the most part to eat healthy during this period of time and to stay on a routine and to stay on track. Um, But me, but I actually did a little staycation here in Puerto Rico and I went to uh, like just 30 minutes away to a place that had a pool in a backyard. So I didn't feel so trapped. And just like changing my environment, which is something I really need to improve on, completely threw me off track. So um, I think that you don't have the distractions. You're not invited to go out to dinner with people. There really isn't a better time, honestly. Um, Let's see here. And then she also, uh, Sahar was asking about like uh, fasting for weight loss. Yes, I think that Fasting for weight loss is something that is tricky. And I think that, you know, people always think of like prolonged fasting um, and weight loss. But I think that you should put yourself to the test of can you alternate day fast? Because I think that's one way to maintain, maintain after a prolonged fast is by alternate day fasting. So I think alternate day fasting is like 100 times harder than just a straight prolonged fast. And that, that was my experience. So I think that you should try alternate day before you do super, super long. Um, 
videos and it's like that it's an insurance company if I don't do them like that. There's some crazy clowns on here. Okay. Um, London, England. Amanda, welcome, welcome. I think we have more international people than people in the States, which is so cool. Um, MC asks, are you more tempted to snack since you're at home more often? No, not necessarily. Um, it more depends on if I have things keeping me busy throughout the day. So like right now the markets have just been insane. Um, so I have a lot distracting me when it comes to like my computer work that I need to do. And now that I don't have a computer, it's a little bit more challenging, but, um, actually I didn't find it as challenging as I would have anticipated. Um, Ella says she's on day four of her 10 day water fast. Awesome. Congratulations. I hope it's going well. I always recall back to my day four of my long prolonged fast. And I just remember so clearly how insane the energy was that I had on day four of my prolonged fast. It was like nothing that I have experienced and I haven't experienced it since. So one thing I also noticed is that when I first started fasting, I get that fasting high and it kind of dwindled and didn't come back. And I would love to get back to that, but I just haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, we have someone from Pennsylvania. We have a fellow, Jennifer Darville, fellow Californian. Hello, Jennifer. Um, someone here is on day 14. They've lost nine kilograms. Well done. That's very exciting, exciting stuff. Um, Wicker Man says, I think prolonged fasting works best if you're fat adapted. Um, you know, I've gone into longer fast, fat adapted, not fat adapted. I feel like there's so many factors, including if you're fat adapted, if you're not, if you're hydrated, if you're not hydrated, I feel like there's just an overwhelming amount of factors. Um, someone asked, what conspiracies were you looking into? Um, my cousin had sent me the Q theory or QAnon or whatever it is. It, what, it's a little, it's a little much for me. I was trying to like fact check some of it and that's when my computer died on me. Crazy, huh? Um, I thought it was a little bit much. Uh, during pandemic, no, it's not a good time for fasting since fasting more than 40 hours weakens the immune system. Yes, that is true. Uh, something that I've been seeing quite often people talk about is that uh, fasting, prolonged fasting will not improve your immune system. So I think it like depends, right? If you're like at home and you're not leaving your house for 30 days, you have enough food, you have enough supplies, like, and you're not make, going out and having contact with anyone, that's one thing. But you're probably not going to be staying home for 30 days. I would lose my absolute mind. Um, I have a question. How do you consume salt and potassium and magnesium? Just put the water, but it's very disgusting. Yes, it is very disgusting. Um, I really haven't been able to drink it since my prolonged fast. And so one thing I do, but this does have calories, is I make a bone broth. So it's kind of just like drinking soup in a sense. And that has become a lot easier. Hi from San Diego. San Diego's beautiful. I love San Diego. My cousin just moved there. Thanks for the distraction from the apocalypse. You're very welcome. We have 37 people tuning in. Awesome. I haven't, like, the last time I did these, I think I was breaking, like, a really long dry fast. I can't really remember, though. It's been a really long time. But I enjoy live videos. I got to do these more often. Um... <laughs> yes, Tiffany. I think... The government did shut my computer down. Um, hey, Coop from Philly. Always wanted to recommend a video to you. Satiety versus satiation on Carno Matt's channel. I will save that. Thank you, Craig Cooper, for the recommendation. I love, I think, satiety and, sati and satiation is such an interesting topic. And how to achieve it. I have been, I have felt challenged in many moments. One thing that I do feel like plays a big role in satiation is being hydrated. So what do you guys think? Do you guys feel like if you're properly hydrated that you become satiated? Like it's easier to reach, reach satiation? Um, Tiffany, have you tried scooping the electrolytes into empty capsules? Wow, that's a great idea. I'm guessing it would be best though to drink a lot of water. So I'm thinking like the potassium, right? You could probably fit a fourth of a teaspoon into a capsule. Um, but is that 
is that going to be like too hard on your body if you consume too many electrolytes at once? How often do I fast? So it really depends. Um, I've been doing more 48s than usual. I've done like three or four over the past 30 days or so. And um, they were okay, I would say. I was noticing I was able to do them with um, bigger gaps in between. Um, but yeah, I think I may continue to do 48s. Or maybe I might push myself a little bit longer. Um, someone's asking some questions here in another language, unfortunately, that I cannot comprehend. Someone asked if I'm wearing hair extensions. My hair looks great. No, no, I'm not wearing hair extensions. Um, this is my normal hair, which is actually kind of long at the moment. Oh my gosh, I feel like I haven't gotten even a trim in a really long time. But for those who have been here for a while, you know that I've had issues with all my hair falling out. But you have to remember, like when your hair falls out, the rest of it still stays the same length. Um, but you can see here that my hair is thickest at the top. And you can see a lot of my hair is like six inches long. You could tell like the thickness. Uh, I feel like my hair that has grown in since losing it is darker, thicker. Um, I'm not really sure. So like it's gone to the point when I put my hair back in a ponytail, the top of my ponytail is super, super thick compared to the rest of it, which is just wild. But I'm so grateful that my hair has grown back um, because it was really, really rough there. Losing your hair will definitely mess a girl up. Um, let's see here. Thank you so much for your response. Uh, another question from Sahar. Does drinking, um, can you drink apple cider vinegar or diet Snapple? And also, I'm scared of loose skin if I water fast for like two weeks or so from the rapid weight loss. So it really just depends like where you start your fast. I think it just depends on skin. So like I am bigger, but like my skin is just, I don't know. I feel like considering how much I fluctuated in weight, I should have way worse um, stretch marks. Like, I don't know. My stretch marks don't bother me like at all. And I feel like they were there before anyways. I don't think that you're going to get loose skin in two weeks. I've never heard of that before. I did 54 days and I did not have loose skin, but it's just like every body is so different. And it's kind of like, if you're going to be losing like a hundred, 200, 300 pounds, you know, I don't know what your current weight is. It's kind of like, it seems like the in inevitable, right? We see, like, for example, the fast and fat man, he mentions that he does have loose skin and that's probably why he can't get to the weight that he wants to. Um, but you know, he fasted and he thought that was going to help him. He hasn't, I haven't watched his videos lately, so, like, I don't know what his current status is, but um, I think it really just depends on what your starting weight is. Um, let's see. Rolly Pie. I have fasted two times before, both 11 days, lost 11 kilograms, one for each day. Wow, that's impressive. But something happens on the 11th day. I feel extremely weak and quit. Why can't I go past day 11? Honestly, I think that's just your body like helping you out in a sense. So I think it's important to like refeed for a day or two. And then if you want to start again, maybe try. But I think it's just really important to listen to your body and you don't want to push your body too far because that's when then you might develop the extreme hunger and it will be hard to get back on track. So it's, it's really challenging to listen to your body when you're fasting. Like I think about when I did my super long, like 54 day long fast. And ultimately I'm like, I never felt hunger, but I was like, would I have felt hunger if I didn't have the electrolytes? Is that like, like kind of like cheating your body in a sense, like confusing your body? I'm not really sure. Slightly vegan, have you made kombucha? Do the bacteria consume some of the sugar in the recipe. I have never made kombucha. I am not really sure exactly. I think I've tried it once or twice. Just really wasn't a fan. I'm not really into like acidic things. Like I have a hard time just drinking lemon water, to be honest. I really, um, I really just like some regular water. 
all that I have drank in the month of March was regular water and lemon water. Zero alcohol. I have been sober for like 35 days. Wild Honey says, do you think you need therapy for that nonstop eating voice in your head? I don't know if you're asking about me personally, if you think I need it or if I think you need it. Not quite sure. Um, what I can say is that nothing takes it faster. No, nothing takes away that voice than just eating. It doesn't have to be bad food or unhealthy food. Just eating until you're like fully satiated just knocks it out immediately. And so I don't think that therapy, I mean, if you go to therapy, right? The, the reason why the voice is created is because you're restricting. If you go to therapy and you're completely honest, they're going to tell you that you have some type of disordered eating. Okay. And then they're going to tell, like recommend you to a nutritionist, put you on a meal plan. When I, I've heard bad, I've heard ba like bad scenarios from that. The truth is that I, from my experience, what takes away the voice is just by eating. It's pretty, it's, it's quite simple. Do I get sleepy after meals? Asked by slightly vegan. You know, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It really just depends. So back in, um, it was like July slash August of 2018, I was doing keto OMAD. And I was usually having about 14 to 1500 calories a day. And wow, I would just like, wouldn't be able to even get up. Like I would just literally lay on my bed and be just completely dead. I had never felt honestly worse in my life. And that's what kind of brought me on to fasting and trying to fast longer. So it's been really challenging to find food that makes me feel really energized after I eat it. But also it comes down to, I don't know if there's like, obviously people have success on OMAD, but for me personally, I don't know if my body just gets too bogged down by consuming too many calories in a short period of time. I'm not really sure. Uh, why won't you, oh, wild honey, why won't you try just eating one meal a day? Just one. Well, wild honey, it's always people like this that never have a photo. I just explained it. How about that timing? I just explained exactly why one meal, I mean, I do eat one meal a day sometimes, but when I did keto one meal a day, oh my gosh, I, I felt horrible. I've done OMAD. I've done that multiple different times. I've done it in a carnivore sense. I've done it in a more vegetable heavy sense. Just really never feel my, be my best. Um, can you drink apple cider vinegar or diet Snapple? And also, did you take vitamins during your fast? I did not take vitamins during my fast. I think vitamins are kind of scammy, to be honest with you. Um, can, you can drink whatever you want. You can, you know, if you want to make it sustainable, um, it all depends. So like, I don't know exactly what is in diet Snapple, but it might be something that you want to cut out long-term and your best bet might be to do it when you're trying to fast. So just an idea there. Um, apple cider, vin apple cider vinegar during a fast. I want to say the fasting fat men did that. I've never tried it. So it just kind of depends. Please, can you tell us if you experience hair loss after water fast? This is what makes me scared um, to do a prolonged water fast. Thank you. Tahir Manal. Yeah, I lost 70% of my hair. Um, you could actually see a lot of it growing back. So a lot of, like, my hair is most thickest at the top. And that is because a lot of my hair is just this long. And right now, the hard part is, is my, my hair just like starts sometimes sticking out where that is. So I mentally prepared myself to lose all my hair during my fast. Like, it's like, I don't give a sh I don't, I don't care. I don't give a damn. People were warning me that I remember like, there's some comments that just stick out. And I remember someone was just like, you're going to lose all your hair and you're going to cry. And I was like, F that I'm not going to cry. I don't give a damn what you say who cares if I lose my hair? I'll be at my goal weight. 
And <laughs> yeah, you know, I mentally prepared myself. I was like, I'm going to lose my hair and I don't care. But when you're washing your hair and just globs and globs and you're just holding like the biggest pile of hair in your hands, yeah, that makes you sick as hell to your stomach. It's not a good feeling. Uh, my friend who just had a baby talked about her experience losing hair and how it just like mentally messed her up too. And I don't know. There's just like, I didn't realize how meaningful my hair was to me until I lost 70% of it. Uh, Sahar asks, do you recommend working out during a water fast? You know, it really just depends. Um, if you're taking electrolytes, I think working out is okay. There's going to be some days where you're like really excited about working out and other days, not so much. You're probably not going to have a ton of desire to work out. I constantly find my body um, trying to preserve energy and in result have zero desire to work out. So that happens for me quite frequently. Hey, listen, wild honey. I have done one meal for a day for an entire month. And once again, I felt like shit. <laughs> all right. Yeah, all caps with wild honey because he really wants me to hear him. Okay. Um, in the mud. Oh, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate it. Thanks again, Craig. I will look into that. Thought of how being fat adapted and fasting focus helps during the... Um, thoughts on how being fat adapted and fasting focus helps during the pandemic. Well, I think it really, I mean, I haven't heard of anyone having like not access to food during this whole situation, but ultimately, I mean, there are, it's really sad for kids that like school is their safe environment that they can't go there. And it's really sad for the ones that they literally get their only food while they're at school. They get that free meal um, of the day. And it's really, really sad to like, think about how for most kids, like being at home during this time is not a better environment than being at school. Um, how does it help during this pandemic in terms of being fat adapted or fasting focused? I mean, it really depends, right? Everyone feels different when they fast. And like, I'll give you an, I'll like talk about from my experience. So I was really excited during this. I'm like, this is great. Like, I'm going to have so much time to build up, like, my new YouTube channel and make all these videos about, like, the economy, how it's currently being affected, like, the financial crisis that's coming and everything like that. I have been, like, really, really challenged during this period of time, way more than I would have ever anticipated. Um, I find myself having to actively do things every day to, like, just not have a bad attitude I'm typically someone who does not have a bad attitude. I've been having a shit attitude during this lockdown. So for me, I really try to get outside, get sunshine every single day. I try to go uh, for a walk, which is ultimately not allowed. So I have to kind of sneak and pretend like I'm on my way to the grocery store. Um, I try to journal daily. It felt nice today to like wash my hair, straighten it and put on some mascara um, and put on some like normal clothes instead of just workout clothes. I try to work out every day. Lifting weights makes me feel strong. I try to sit in my sauna. So just try to create like a very like active routine in a sense. That's what's keeping me sane during all of this. Um, Layla asked, do you think you will ever do a long fast again? Well, by long, I'm guessing you mean more than seven days. I don't want to, I don't never say never, right? Like Justin Bieber told us, mainly because like, depends if I was to get like a certain kind of illness or something, I might want to fast for a long period of time. I might find myself, you know, fasting for a few days and it turning into something longer. For me, there's nothing worse than that voice that I've been mentioning lately. Hey, if you are enjoying this, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. We have 31 people on, 10 thumbs. Be that 11th thumb and show support. I would really appreciate it. Okay. Everett, great advice, Mariah. Listen to your body during a fast. You're in control and can stop anytime and start again when you're ready. Everett, I love that. Simple, brilliant, and thank you to the seven people 
the eight people that just added a thumbs up. You're the best, and I appreciate you. Listen to this. Everett, I your thumbnail looks like, or yeah, your photo looks like um, a famous person, so I don't know if this is really you, but you look like a wise man. And Everett says, listen to your body during a fast. You're in control and can stop anytime and start again when you're ready. Simple. Fasting does not have to be complicated. Thank you for the wise words, Everett. We all appreciate it. Good day, T. Roz. Hope all is well. Do you think fasting can be a gateway to eating disorders? Yep, sure do. I absolutely do. People are going to get mad and disagree with it, but that's okay. See, this is what I've learned. So if you do low carb, if you're a vegan, if you're a faster, you treat your diet like a religion, and you drive everyone nuts. Yep, I said it. I said it. And um, there's no reason to turn your way of eating, your way of fasting into a religious thing that you just want to pose on to other people. So unfortunately, yes, I do think that fasting can be a gateway. You know, I've mentioned this before. I used to always think that I was a binge eater and then I fasted. <laughs> I was like, before, <laughs> I was not a binge eater. Oh my God. It was those times afterwards where my body was trying so hard to get back to my original weight before the fast. And once it got there, my body chilled out, smooth sailing. It literally, it was the strangest thing. T. Ross asked, do you still follow Cole? I'm sure you're talking about Cole Robinson. No, I have not watched one of Cole's videos. It's probably been, I can't even remember, but at least eight months, I would say. I don't even see his videos come up recommended. I think it was, it was pretty much after he made a video definitely talking shit to me. I was <laughs> after that, I was like, no, nah, thanks. I'm good. Um, so whenever I made that video, basically saying like, oh yeah, I know he's totally talking about me in this video. I don't remember when that was. Um, what's left in your supermarket? What do you see people buying? What do they leave on the shelves? I'm happy to say that in Puerto Rico, um, everything's pretty much there. The only thing that I haven't seen is I went to Costco the other day. I was looking for toilet paper, bleach for my friend. I was getting stuff for my friend. There was nothing, um, none of that was there, but pretty much everything was normally stocked in terms of food. It, I feel like there's probably more grocery stores like per person in Puerto Rico. And so, I don't know, everything just seems well stocked. Otto says, hi, started my 30 day fast today. Awesome. I wish you the best. Christina says, just join. Are you water fasting again? Um, I've been doing 48s here and there, but I am not fasting today. Um, SP Spaz says, sipping soups plus uh, Pellegrino mineral water keeps me full for a while with very low calories. Nice. I'm glad you found a way to reach satiation. I personally do not enjoy mineral water. I just, let me remind you, just love regular water. I know I'm a little vanilla. Glaston, just wanted to say thanks for the inspiration. Follow fasting to lose 240 pounds in 10 months, 22 days. I could never fast to the bone as recommended. Your story made me feel comfortable with eight days. Awesome. I'm glad that you real, you know, were also, it was also brought to your attention that fasting down to the bone, ah, uh, yeah, maybe not the best idea. And um, sometimes I feel like I was one of the first people that, I mean, I tried to fast down to the bone, but I literally felt like I was having a stroke on day 54. So I stopped. But um, I felt like I made people aware that, hey, maybe this isn't a bat. Maybe this isn't the route to take. Um, but everyone has had their own, own experience. Uh, Leah Waterfall says, do you work? If not, how do you make your money? I've always <laughs> wondered. <laughs> um, well, uh, I have some videos on my new channel called Mariah Monetize where I'm going to be diving a deep, deeper into this. 
uh, do I work? Uh, I don't have like a day job. I make all of my income from investments, uh, investments in cryptocurrency, investments uh, in traditional stocks, investments in Canadian marijuana stocks. Um, I'm also an investor in a fund here in Puerto Rico. So that's pretty much how I make money. And I don't have to have a day job, but I am very realistic that that could change at any point. So I'm just grateful for where I am and how things have gone this far. But um, yeah, I really enjoy my simplistic lifestyle. Um, and I am in Puerto Rico because when I'm in by living in Puerto Rico, I pay 0% capital gains tax and a $5,000 donation to the Puerto Rican, to a Puerto Rican nonprofit every year. So it makes sense for me to be here. How long have I been fasting? Um, I think it's been, I, I don't remember exactly when I did my first like two or three day long fast, but I think it must've been in like July or August of 2018. Juan asked, um, Mariah, do you believe that you have an eating disorder? I believe I do. So I think that like, if you think about the way you eat, I think all of us have some sense of disordered eating because do you like for me, I think of things that I think are normal that I do consistently. And I believe that those are not normal. Like there is like, for me, I think that looking at the clock when you're eating or like not eating because of what time it is, is a form of disordered eating. I think obsessing and researching what you eat too much is not healthy, a form of disordered eating. I think that there's a, an eating disorder it comes in a lot of different shapes and forms. Um, so yeah, absolutely. I'm always looking at the clock when I eat to see when it is I'm counting how many hours have I been fasted? I'm over here and I, I want to get to the point where I don't have to do this, but I'm specifically counting my calories and tracking what I'm eating. So I could see how do I feel? Should I continue eating these foods or should I remove them from my diet and bring in something new? So I, um, I like the whole month of March, I tracked everything that I ate. I looked at, you know, my, my macronutrients for the day. And to me, it's like, that is excessive, right? I mean, I just look forward to the day where I don't have to deal with tracking every single thing that I eat and like being fearful of foods, right? I mean, it's just exhausting, exhausting. Oh, let's see here. Nur Anis asks, this is my third day fasting and I have a fever and a headache. Is this normal? I have never, I have never gotten a fever from fasting. Um, headaches. Yes. Headaches are like really, really deep. And, um, what really triggers a headache is loud noise. Like I become so sensitive on day two and three to noise. Okay. What would you say to someone looking to go on an extended fast like you did? Also, do you believe in set points for everyone? Um, Melanie asked this. Great question, Melanie. Okay, I'm going to start with your second one first. Your second question first because I feel like it's the easiest one to ask. So do I believe in set points for everyone? I have experienced set points 100%. Just like I said, after the fast, my body had the most intense hunger I've ever experienced of my entire life until I got back to my normal weight. As soon as I got back to my normal weight, I was just like a completely different person. I felt so back to normal. It was the strangest thing. Um, and I think that the more times that you move away from your set point, your body fights even harder to get back to it. I do think that's also true. And what would I say to someone trying to do an extended fast like I did? I would say, oh, it's so hard because this is a thing. I have been there. When I came across fasting and I did all the research and everything, I was so sure of myself and no one was going to change my mind. And no one was going to turn me away from trying to do a prolonged fast, right? They were, and so for me, it was like I had to do it myself and I had to find out the hard way. 
The problem with this is that, I mean, you can tell it's like your friend who has like a shit boyfriend, you know, like, oh, she'll figure it out. But when I think about, like, I would just never want anyone to go through what I went through. It was seriously, it was hell. It was so terrible. And, and not the fast. The fast is easy, people. The fast is easy. What I would tell someone is first try alternate day fasting and go from there. I believe that alternate day fasting is much more challenging than trying to fast for like 30 or 40 consecutive days. So um, what's really important is after the fast and what your eating routine is after the fast. So, I mean, alternate day is a good, like that would have been beneficial if I, if I would have done maybe like alternate day before um, and then after, I would have kind of already prepared myself for it. I eat one meal a week, fast rest of the time. Nice. Let's see. I noticed you wear glasses in some of your videos. Do you wear contacts when you don't have your glasses on or just go without them? Yes, I wear contacts the majority of the time. And usually when I have my glasses on, it's because it's the end of the day. I've taken off my contacts, but... I just started wearing contacts like maybe five years ago. Oh, best thing ever. So I actually originally got glasses when I was in first grade. Independently wealthy, they call it. I don't know what that means. Would I invest in golds? You know, I go back and forth on this. Not really back and forth, but I always expose myself to information on gold. You know, I, I follow Peter Schiff. Actually, I saw Peter Schiff. So if you're like really into gold, like you know who Peter Schiff is. He's a huge gold bug. He lives here in Puerto Rico. And it was really funny because back during the foot during like the NFL season, I was at um, I was at this beach party where they like put up TVs and everyone watches, you know, Sunday football. And I'm like, oh, that dude looks just like Peter Schiff. And then my friend's like, yeah, Mariah, that is Peter Schiff. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like he lives in the neighborhood. So, um, yeah, you know, gold just doesn't get me excited. I think I'd rather own a Bitcoin. Yeah, I just. I have bought in like a little bit of gold and silver ETFs, um, but sold them within like a month or two. So I'm just, I'm not really crazy about gold or precious metals. How has your lifestyle affected dating? Um, lifestyle in terms of Craig Cooper asks this. I don't know if you're asking my lifestyle in terms of fasting or my lifestyle in terms of moving to Puerto Rico. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to guess fasting. Um, you know, honestly, I don't really put myself out there to date much. And the thought of a boyfriend kind of just sounds like too much work. So I guess it really hasn't. Um, I guess you could say that I am very open and transparent on social media. And so if someone was to like Instagram stalk me or YouTube stalk me before, like maybe asking me out on the, on a date, they might be like, this girl is just way too fucking obsessed with fasting and has way too many issues. I don't know. If I meet someone, I'm specifically like, Okay, can you not look at my social media? I'd rather you just get to know me, like, at, at the right pace. Um, do you need to put salt in your water? Scallop ask. Uh, at, at your choice. If you want extra electrolytes, yes. If you don't, then you don't. Vanessa says she likes my hoops. Thanks, girl. My godmother got them for me for Christmas a couple years ago. I'm trying to rock the hoops. Thanks for the compliment, Vanessa. Fasting. Um... Fasting is still eating carbs makes it much harder. I'm going to have to, I mean, it depends. Not for everyone, little Viking coach. Not for everyone. Um, and I say that because my experience with eating just sweet potatoes for three days. I remember during your long fast, you talked about throat hunger. Have you experienced that lately during shorter fasts? Um... You know, I would say no when I when you compare it to on my 50-40 long fast, it felt like like a scratching, scratchy sensation in my throat. 
Um, but it also was like, I kind of experienced like heartburn sensations towards the end of it. So the, the lines were getting blurred slightly. Wild honey, why are you single? God, I just am so happy and content alone that I can't imagine my life any other way, wild honey. Vanessa, oh girl, I just love your compliments. You're making me feel so good about myself. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, Tiffany. She agrees with Vanessa. Y'all are the best. Oh, thanks for clarifying, Everett. So, um, Everett says he's had many successful 10 day fasts and twice as many false starts. So, Everett over here, an experienced faster, right? We all have false starts when it comes to fasting. We have these big plans. Like, I'll give you an example. I was planning on fasting tomorrow. And then my friend's like, hey, Patrick's making lunch again. If you want to come over at two, come over for lunch. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, but I have to say yes to every social interaction that I can. Because, like I said, I have been... This has been, the quarantine has been way more challenging for me than I originally thought. Way more challenging. And I experienced something the other day that I just did not like. I had a normal day. I worked out normally the day before. And then all of a sudden, I just, it was like a ton of bricks that hit me. I felt so fatigued and weak from like a mental perspective and a physical perspective that I think like being depressed just like overwhelmed me in a sense. I don't know. Has anyone ever felt that? Like it, I had zero reason to feel extreme fatigue mentally and physically. So I'm like, I, I, think, I think I'm depressed because I can't leave the house. I'm not really sure. Didn't get sunshine that day either. Wild Honey said, are you Portuguese? Yes, I am Portuguese. Both of my parents are Portuguese. My dad was born in Portugal. My mom was conceived in Portugal, born in the United States, in Fresno, California. And they both speak Portuguese, but I don't, which is really, really sad. Ruber says the most successful fast I've ever had are juice fasts. You know, I've never tried a juice fast, but it would be interesting, actually. I, like, don't think about it because I don't have a juicer, but... What was people's reactions after a 50-40 fast? Did you get treated any differently? You know, people want to talk about it and they want to talk about it a lot. And obviously I talk about it here, but it's like, okay, like I will talk about it here. It's the people that want to talk about fasting, but do I really want to talk about it? Like outside of this, like when I go back to California and I see my family and my friends, no, I don't. I'm sorry. But like, can we talk about other things in life? I don't really want to always talk about fasting. Um, did people treat me differently? Um, Sometimes people are like, oh my God, I have so much respect for you and your 54 day long fast. And I'm just like, what the fuck? I don't want respect. It was easy. It was so easy. Like there is no respect needed because it was just way too easy. Um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Let me get back to where I need to get back to. Um... Let's see. I'm doing the fasting until I have the gastric sleeve surgery, hopefully this summer. I have yo-yoed for 20 years. I don't know much about the gastric sleeve. I mean, I'm guessing, is that gastric bypass? I'm not really sure. I just hear so many scary things about it. But I would say, like, follow the fasting Batman. Like, you know, you're going to be able to relate to him. I mean, I don't really know. Is there, like, smaller people that get gastric sleeve surgery? I'm not really sure, but if you could do it naturally, like I really encourage you to do it naturally before you go under the knife. Devin Barry, good self-awareness. You know what, Devin? I try really hard to be self-aware and I try really hard to call myself out before everyone else does. I am 27 years young. Um, yes. If you're leaving anytime soon, don't forget, go out there and create a life that you love. I've been on here for 45 minutes, and the time is just flying. I'm having a great time. Um, I got to do this more often. I won't get all, uh, I won't get all like, 
uh, gloomy if I do these more often. Wild honey, do you believe in God? Yes, I do. People should try being disabled for a day. We have been distanced from long ago called stigma. Just another day. Um, Everett loves the Portuguese sweetbread. Got a great recipe from a friend who was from the Azores. Nice. Um, I have an Everett. Is that like a, is that a Portuguese name? I have an uncle who's Portuguese. I don't know if Everett's like a common name in the Portuguese culture. But yes, Portuguese sweetbread is so delicious. And my fa favorite way to have it, I haven't had it in such a long time, but is to get it like cut a thick piece, get it slightly toasted, like put it in the... Um, the toaster or the um, toaster oven and then put either coconut oil or butter on it. That's my favorite way. I cannot eat sweet bread dry though. Uh, your makeup always looks nice. The minimal looks good on you. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Today I tried to fill in my brows a bit. I put on some mascara and I put a little bit of powder on just because my nose is really red because I got sunburnt these past few days. But today I have really, really nothing on. Um, okay. Any tips on alternate day fast and how to eat? I'm used to 72 to 92 hour fast. You know, I think you just got to try it. You got to like play around with your food. Oh shoot. I'm at 20%. So I'm going to have to go in a little bit, but just like track what you're eating and see how you feel. Right? Like you might want to try to first on your day of eating, eat, like in a 10 to 12 hour window and see how you feel. Or if you want to eventually cut it down over time, or if you want to try different foods, just like keep track of what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, what we're all trying to do is reach like ultimate, ultimate energy, peak energy. No, I use a different term. I forgot what I usually say. Ma not maximum energy. I'm just like just being energized to, I can't think of the word. Oh, Myers-Briggs personality test. I feel like I have taken it. I just don't know which one I am. Uh, what's my school background? I am a proud college dropout. And I wear my college dropout badge with honor because I think college is a massive scam. And it will really become even more of a scam if it's free for everyone. Um, because what they're really revealing is that it really isn't worth shit. And I'm talking about like an undergrad degree. I mean, it just depends what you want to do. For me, I went to school. I My major was business. My concentration was strategy and entrepreneurship. And I was like, honestly, the truth is I had one too many cars on sweepstakes. So it's it, like my, my income tax would have been that I had earned 60K that year. I wasn't going to get a grant anymore because I had earned too much money. I was like, pay for college myself or use the money that I have to go start a business. So I started a business and I learned the good old fashioned way. And that was the most beneficial thing I could have ever done for myself was to drop out of college and start a business on my own. Best thing I ever did. I have never regretted for one second. And that was a 19 year old gal and people were telling me how stupid I was. And I was like, nope, I know what I'm doing. Cause this is at the end of the day, it felt right in my gut. Staying in college gave me anxiety and leaving college filled me with peace. How much does it cost to live in Puerto Rico? I work for Costco. Could someone live down there comfortably on a Costco income, 64K a year? I love Costco, Watchmen and Training. That's like my favorite store of all time. Actually, my dream is to start a YouTube channel called Costco Girl, where I review everything at Costco and just like am so overly obsessed with Costco. Um, I would say so. Yeah. I mean, kind of just depends what area you're coming from now, but, um, I think you could li live comfortably on 64 K a year. doesn't mean that, you know, you're going to live like and have like on the beach and have some penthouse or something, but I think you can live a comfortable life on 64 K a year. Um, okay. Juan asked me, Mariah, after your 54 days water fast, when did the binging start? That might, that was my issue with yo-yo dieting. Um, I want to say it started. So this is a thing. It's really, really hard to say because I think it actually kind of sort of started happening at the end of December. 
And then that's why I started fasting January 1st because I wanted to get back down. And then it was like I would eat too much and then try to recover by fasting. And then it got to the point where it was completely out of control. But I want to say mid February, I had already probably gained back like 15 to 20 pounds. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, Jessica asked if I'm keeping sane during quarantine and the answer is partially not quite trying my best though I just like this is the thing is like I went out today on like a 4.2 mile walk this morning and it's just so hard on my hips like I, w I only thought that running was hard on my hips I feel like I'm 70 years old when I go for a four mile walk I wear my Vibrams and so I've been trying to just like put the weight like trans like dig into my heels and like so my glutes are contracted when I'm walking to take some pressure shoot okay guys I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to go because I think my phone's dying shoot I can't I can't see what percentage is left but I wish I could stay longer nice scallop college dropouts together. Okay. Well, it's been 51 minutes. Thank you so much, everyone for joining. I really enjoyed this. If um, you want me to do more of these, go ahead and leave a comment below. And I loved connecting with all of you. It was such a wonderful time. I love all the random questions, the fasting questions, the non-fasting questions, all are very welcome here. I love questions. Bye, Tiffany. Thanks for joining. All right, everyone. I had a wonderful time. Stay sane, get some sunshine. Journal. If you're feeling like shit, journal about it. Call up a friend. Tell them if you're feeling like crap. Like, get that bad energy out of you if you're really struggling during this quarantine time. And being active is just, like, the best. The best. And um, if you can still buy weights, buy those weights. Oh, my gosh. I'm just loving lifting. I only have, like, 15-pound weights, but I try to do, like, the five-by-five five movement, movements. I'm just feeling strong and good, and hopefully my body starts changing soon. So that's all I have for you today. As always, go out there and create a life that you love.